Welcome to Voices from the Valley, a podcast of the Community Foundation for the Fox Valley Region. I'm Amy Spreeman. And I'm Carolyn DeRosier. Today we are talking about the most recent data from the U.S. Census Bureau, which showed that racial and ethnic diversity in Northeast Wisconsin is increasing. In fact, the number of Black, Asian, Native American, multiracial, and Hispanic people increased 57% from 2010 to 2020, and it's wonderful to see. That's right, Carolyn. If we want to know who we are as the communities that make up the Fox Valley region, the census is a great place to start. We're going to cover a recent series of reports from our local journalism partnership with the New News Lab, a group of news organizations dedicated to preserving in-depth local reporting. We had a chance to sit down with two reporters about their research for a new series titled Home is Here, Stories Behind the Census. In this episode, we're going to hear from them and bring you some voices behind those stories they covered. We're also going to talk about some of the most striking changes in the census data. For example, the largest shift in our communities documented by the 2020 census was the growth of those who identified as two or more races. Their numbers more than tripled in Brown, Outagamie, and Winnebago counties. Nearly 40,000 people, or 6% of the three counties' total population, reported being multiracial on the 2020 census. It would be impossible to share all of the statistics from the U.S. Census Bureau in one podcast episode, so we're going to link up all the numbers in our program notes today, which you can find on our website. Yes, but much more important than the numbers are the people behind them and their stories. A little later on, we're going to bring you a conversation we had with Timber Smith, who was interviewed about his experience moving from Milwaukee to Oshkosh 20 years ago. But first, let's hear from those reporters I mentioned from the New News Lab. Their names are Natalie Eilbert, a reporter from the Green Bay Press-Gazette, and her partner in this series, Duke Benke, from the Post-Crescent in Appleton. Their findings, as well as their interview subjects, are fascinating and heartwarming. Here's what they had to say. For our part in writing the stories behind the census, that's a way for us to frame and give context to the stories of people who have historically not had much voice in mainstream media. We're an industry under fire, and yet I just see our role so important for democracy and representation of of all people. Uh, of all, you know, residents and readers. And, um, you know, we tend to, uh, you know, gravitate toward people who look like us, act like us. But I think if we, you know, take a step back and look out, as as I have in the years I've been in the Valley, the growth is here. You can see it, uh, the diversity. You really just have to open your eyes to see it. As we grow and glo- and become more global, I think we do need to let go of this old idea that, everything revolves around white people. Everything revolves around that, that Euro centric way. There's Western, there's Eastern, there, there's multi, there's so many religions and they're all happening here in Northeast Wisconsin. I hope that, you know, people who read this have a greater appreciation, a greater understanding of our global community. I mean, we're we're not Eurocentric anymore. You know, it, it's just it's we are global, um, and with travel and and technology, that world continues to shrink. And so, I hope that people who read our our series have a greater understanding, appreciation of their neighbors, um, and maybe ask themselves, you know, have they done enough to help their neighbors um, who are in need, or done enough to reach out and just yeah, be a kinder, a kinder world for all people to live. And and I hope that comes through in our reporting. We're going to take a quick break and be right back. The Community Foundation for the Fox Valley Region is a great resource for making a local impact while simplifying your charitable giving through a tax-deductible charitable fund. 
Perhaps you're passionate about certain organizations or want to support causes such as education or pets at the animal shelter, or you're interested in addressing the greatest needs of the community. When you partner with us, we'll share our local knowledge so that you can make a difference today and always. Learn more at cffoxvalley.org. We are back. I had the chance to sit down with our friend Timber Smith. Timber is the City of Appleton's Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Coordinator, and he was featured in the News Lab's report on the census. We wanted to find out what it was like for him when he first arrived in the Fox Valley in 1992. Here's Timber's story. Thanks so much for joining us on the podcast, Timber. Hey, thank you for having me. It's an honor. So let's start with you telling us a bit more about yourself and your current role with the city of Appleton. Well, my name is Timber Smith. I've had the opportunity or the the happiness, I'll say, of living in the Fox Cities area for close to 30 years now. I originally came here to go to UW Oshkosh, and currently I'm working for the city of Appleton as their diversity, equity, and inclusion coordinator. And it's amazing. It's amazing to have this opportunity to connect with people and to make true change, or at least hopefully make true change. Yeah, I think I think it will be true change. And we're really glad that you stayed. We're really glad that you stayed in the Valley all this time and um, glad for everything that you've contributed while you've been here. Timber, you were featured recently in a journalism series, uh, Home is Here, Stories Behind the Census, from the Northeast Wisconsin News Lab. And you talked about your experience of moving to Oshkosh in 1992. Can you share a little bit about what it was like to move to the Valley as a Black man at that time? You know, I I would say that it was a bit of a culture shock, but in a way, it just really wasn't, at least not for me. I know others that the um, other marginalized populations moving here can be a culture shock depending on where you're coming from. And I mean, even though I'm from Milwaukee, and I mean, I'm from Milwaukee, Milwaukee, inner city Milwaukee, (laughs) not the not the uh, one of the suburbs outside of Milwaukee. I had always gone to schools where I was one of very few people of color. And I mean, that's my entire school experience uh, from kindergarten through high school. So when I came here for college, it was kind of like, oh, okay, I know this. (laughs) So, but nonetheless, um, I wasn't in my comfort zone because I had moved to a different city um, to go to college. And so you still look around and you're like, whoa, this is... um, you know, the difference was before it was just school where I had the experience, but what I went home to was very diverse. And now what home was, was not very diverse. So there was, there was a little bit of a, a shakeup, I'll say, uh, a personal shakeup, um, but it didn't take me long to adjust. But coming here, just some of the experiences that I had um, in 92, it was much, much different. There just wasn't that many people that I saw that looked like me. And I mean, very, very few to the point that it felt like you literally knew everyone. And if you didn't, you took the time to get to know them. I mean, I literally would be driving somewhere and I would stop and pull over and be like, hey, who are you? Do you need a (laughs) ride? Now, that sounds crazy, but that literally is what we were doing in 92. And I know that I am not the only person of color who did that. And I know to say the exaggeration, but it felt like we literally knew every Black person from Oshkosh through Appleton and maybe even into Green Bay. Uh, And um, but what was so cool about it at that time? I mean, there's there. Of course, we experienced some negative things just because the community was still getting used to the concept of growth, whether they liked it or not. It was happening. Mm -hmm. Um, But. What it did do was the people who are here in these marginalized communities, um, and particularly I'll speak about the Black community because that was my experience, we were tight niche. We knew each other. We we hung out with each other. And I mean all age groups. So being a college student, you often don't hang out with people who live in the community, mm-hmm. locals, as, they, as we like to use the term. But when I went to college at UW Oshkosh, And uh, the Black people who were locals, we hung with them. Mm -hmm. They came and we went to their house and ate food and cooked and and they came to some of our parties and everything. And uh, I mean, like it was 
it was full immersion um, between it. And I don't know if that would happen in any other environment if there weren't so few people. And I, and I really appreciate the, um, the mentorship and the lessons they taught me about life and also how to, how to maneuver in this area. Mm, yeah, that's really unique. Absolutely. Thank you, Timber. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Laura Moronk with Godfrey & Kahn in Appleton. As a board member and volunteer for the Community Foundation of the Fox Valley Region, I'm honored to help our donors invest in the community that has given them so much. Thanks to the Community Foundation, donors of all levels and backgrounds can direct their generosity to nonprofits that impact lives, ensuring that together we flourish. To learn more about giving, please go to cffoxvalley.org. Now here's part two of Carolyn's interview with Timber Smith. So the headline of the census story is that we've seen significant population growth in Black, Asian, Native American, and Hispanic residents, as well as residents of two or more races since the 2010 census. It's about a 60% increase. What is your perspective on this growth and what that growth means for our communities? Uh, my perspective on that growth is absolutely it. Why wouldn't it happen? Um, we ask these questions as if the populations, our marginalized populations, don't want the same things as the people who currently already reside in these spaces. Mm. And I don't get that because, you know, people always ask, well, why do you think? Well, they moved here or live here for the same reasons you do. So that's called uh, a high quality way of life with affordable costs, Mm -hmm. Uh, great school systems, safety, great professional opportunities. Every reason that someone who's already residing here uh, is here is the same reason why anybody would move here from any of these marginalized communities because they they want the same things. Yeah, and I think you make a great point and some of that growth is is people having babies. It's not necessarily all people moving here, it's people who maybe came here previously but now they're well established in the community. They're having kids and and those kids are sometimes staying and it's just the natural population increase that way too which I think is important. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's that, I mean, I've known, I've known, and I, I have met individuals who, who moved here in the seventies and they've had families and, uh, they had kids and their kids have now had kids, you know? And so most definitely there, there is internal growth. People whose kids are, are from the region. I have that scenario because I, I have a daughter who's now 24 who was born and raised in the Fox cities. And so I, I'm one of those people. Mm-hmm. We're going to be doing a number of stories on the census, on the census changes um, in partnership with the new news lab. And there are some terms we're going to be using that I want to make sure we take a moment to kind of break down with our listeners. And I thought, given your long career in diversity, equity, inclusion work, that you would be a perfect person to help us do that. Would you be open to helping that? I'm sure going to try. Okay. <laughs> There's no exact science, but um, I, so let's start with a few words that will be important in our conversations, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and DEI is the common acronym. And I've heard some people say, you know, these are buzzwords, but I think maybe we don't understand them well or understand the differences between them well. Um, So I wanted to ask you in your own words, how do you define diversity, equity, and inclusion and the differences between those words? Um, I agree. Um, I do think people think they're buzzwords and don't have an understanding of it. And um, when you say it, I, I think people go to spaces and have instantaneous feelings about them, whether positive or negatively. I like to start off by saying what DEI actually is. And to me, how I like to define DEI is um, DEI is the work of the people for the people by the people, mm. literally. It's diversity, equity, inclusion. We all want that, whether it's in our workspaces or in our community. And so let's start at that point. What is diversity to define it um, personally? 
it's stating specific individual demographics and traits. It's just saying there's difference. There's diverse um, traits of individuals. I'd also say that um, diversity could be labeled as a metric, something that could be measured. Often when you we talk about diversity and people say, you know, we're going to work on this or hire someone and we don't know how to measure it, um, seems to me like that's a real easy measurement. <laughs> I think it's the measurement that people don't want to measure. So mm-hmm. they don't say there's anything to measure, but uh, diversity seems like a really easy metric to measure to say what kind of progress or, uh, you're making in your organization. In, and I'll go to inclusion. And to me, inclusion is um, how well we embrace, accept, and remove barriers. Basically, it's the empowerment of people. People want to be included. And we should be trying to find ways to help include all people, um, whatever that looks like, and for whatever your space needs to facilitate that possibility. And then equity to me, is just a conscious effort to try to provide equal experiences regardless of people's difference. Now, what it would take to make that happen isn't always the same, right? Um, There's always this meme out there of uh, three gentlemen trying to look over a fence, and uh, one gentleman's really tall, one's medium height, and one's really short. And to give them the same box does not help. Mm-hmm. Equity means giving people what they need so the experience can be equitable, but that may not be what they need may not be equal across the board. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it could so, vary widely based on someone's uh, identities or their personal diversity in terms of what they need or what would support or help them thrive. Correct. And then um, I feel like we can't talk about those words without bringing in the term belonging. Mm. <laughs> you know, and um, to me, that one's an obvious one. It, it's exactly as it sounds. Belonging to me means feeling valued, being recognized, being able to to express yourself freely. It's just that simple. So they kind of all go hand in hand. Thank you for that and for kind of helping us make it simple and easy to understand and remember that these are things that we all want in our lives and we all seek them out in different ways. Um, Another term I want to unpack a little bit is, especially regarding the census, the term minority. So you you could look at the say we've had growth in minority populations. And I feel like more often I'm hearing people use the term marginalized. Could, how would you advise um, talking about residents who are non-white, non-Hispanics or non-majority is, is minority the word we should use or what are your thoughts on that? Ooh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> that's, that's an honest answer. Um, I personally, I try not to use the word minority as much anymore and have moved to marginalized. It's just a feeling about minority as if because there's less of that, there's less significance for what the need is. Mm. And so I think marginalized says it a little bit better, which is just saying, you know, these our voices or or views or populations who have not traditionally or historically been included in conversations or decisions. And I think that more accurately portrays. But minority makes it seem as if to have to be a minority anything means there's less of. Mm-hmm. And I don't think those needs are less of. Mm-hmm. Thank you. The biggest area of growth uh, racially from the census in our area is multiracial or those of two or more races. And I know yourself are part of a multiracial family, as am I. Um, did the fact that multiracial being the, that largest area of growth surprise you at all? Oh, absolutely not. It's so visible. Mm-hmm. Um, it Just seeing um, the number of interracial couples that are visibly out there in the public now and not as if they didn't exist more. There just seems to be a a more significant number of them. The children, which I think uh, when you have biracial children, you can kind of, you can spot who might be biracial children. And there's just seems to be a, um, a significant growth there in the schools. So no, there's, 
there's absolutely no surprise. And then also just with the attitudes of communities, I just think um, the stigma that used to be associated has really, it hasn't disappeared, but is a far less prevalent. Mm-hmm. And and you see it even more so like on TV and things like, um, mm-hmm. you know, I remember it was years ago that there was this huge deal about the interracial couple that they had for the Cheerios commercial. Yep. <laughs> you know, do you remember that? I do. I was thinking about that the other day because there's so many interracial relationships now in commercials and TV shows and it's like, it's become normal, but that commercial was a big deal. <laughs> that commercial was such a big deal and there was a firestorm around it. And, and you know what? Kudos to General Mills and Cheerios for standing their ground on that. But now I feel like the majority of all the commercials I see have interracial couples in them. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, wow, what a change in a very short time. And I do believe that TV sets precedent. Mm-hmm. And since it's so visible, um, I think it, it's also saying to those communities that may have had a prior problem with it that you can't put that jack back in the box now. Mm-hmm. This is how culturally and uh, this is how we're moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't that be strange if all of a sudden it started to, to yeah, go back and then you think about why why was it so prevalent and why did you never see um, these types of relationships portrayed? So, yes. So we are extra excited to interview you today, Timber, because you are a fellow podcaster yourself. Can you yeah. tell our listeners a little bit about your podcast, The Kosh? Yeah, um, I have a podcast called The Kosh. It's a podcast spotlighting interesting people associated with Oshkosh and the surrounding Fox Valley area. Uh, I started it during the pandemic. Uh, If you know me, I'm a bit of a nerd and I really like my tech. (laughs) And it was just an opportunity. Like I just found podcasts fascinating. And I was like, you know, I totally want to start one. And uh, it took me a minute to kind of figure it out. But uh, I went ahead and and made the plunge. And um, I'm on my 36th episode. It's just a conversation and it's super authentic. Yeah, some awesome guests. And we'll include a link to your podcast in our program notes for this episode so our listeners can go and check it out. Hey, thank you. Well, to wrap up our time together, Timber, I think I'll ask two two last questions. And maybe even if you want to choose between them or answer a little bit of both, I'll leave it up to you. Mm-hmm. Um, so the one is, in your experience, from your perspective, would you say the Fox Valley is inclusive of all people? And then any advice that you might give to our listeners that might want to help increase inclusion or belonging in the Fox Valley? To be perfectly fair, I don't think there is any place that's inclusive of all people. <laughs> I don't know if that place really exists. Um, There's always going to be somebody ostracized or excluded in some type of capacity. At least I couldn't come up with the perfect space. And I would say the same for the Fox Valley region. Um, I do think they do a great job here in the region of being inclusive, but it's it's not perfect. Um, Like anything, it's, it's far from perfect in a way. But more importantly, I don't think that Perfection is what you strive for. I think more importantly, the willingness to continue doing the work to make inclusive spaces is what's important. And that I think we can celebrate here because there is a great community of individuals out here trying to make that possible. Uh, My advice to the listeners would be understand that DEI work isn't a checkbox. There's no end. You're not going to ever finish doing this work. You, it's a workout regimen, like going to the Y. You stay healthy. You go to the Y every day. You do that for however long you do that, and you maintain a healthy body. It's the same with our community. We have to continue doing diversity, equity, and inclusion work to maintain a healthy community uh, where we can all feel as if we belong. Other advice, be willing to tear down your silos. Silos is, is the one thing that halts progress. We need to not just live in our world. We need to make an effort to understand others' worlds. Thank you, Timber. I love that perspective. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. Appreciate everything that you do in the community and hope our listeners will go check out the Kosh and um, maybe we'll have you on again in the future. Ah, That would be awesome. Love it.
This is Jerry Malman with the Chilton Area Community Foundation, an affiliate of the Community Foundation for the Fox Valley Region. We're celebrating 20 years of enhancing the quality of life in the greater Chilton area. Chilton's a small, close-knit community where giving hearts are common. I'm so proud of the generous individuals, businesses, and organizations that have set up more than 50 funds. In two decades, we've granted more than $7 million to area nonprofits, making a difference in the Chilton area. Learn more at ChiltonAreaFoundation.org. Welcome back. We are excited to share more about the changing face of Northeast Wisconsin. And one of the biggest changes is the increase in the Hispanic population. The Census Bureau says Hispanics are an ethnicity group that can be Black, Asian, Native American, white, or any combination of races. And they make up the largest minority population in Brown, Outagamie, and Winnebago counties. I had a chance to meet up with Lisette Cruz Jimenez, a diversity, equity, and inclusion coordinator for Latinx middle school students for the Appleton Area School District. And Lisette is also a volunteer with us at the foundation. We don't have time to share our entire conversation with Lisette in this episode, but we're going to do that in part two of our series on the census. So I thought I'd give our listeners a sneak preview of what she had to say. To be honest, at the beginning, um, you know, back in 2005, when I first moved here, it was it was hard. 15 years ago, the Fox Valley looked very, very different than it does today. Um, We've made some strides. We're not where most of us would like, but we have made some strides in um, diverse populations here in the in the Fox Valley. But it was hard. But um, I've grown to love the Fox Valley as a welcoming place if I allow myself to open myself up to that as well. Um, But, you know, at the beginning, it was nobody needed new friends, you know, so that was really, really complicated at the beginning. And and it's hard to, as a person of color, you know, you don't want to play the victim like some people would say, but it's hard to determine whether it's because you're Latina or because people just you know, they've, they've got people and friends that they've grown up with, so they don't really need a new friend, you know? Carolyn, I am very excited to hear more from Lizette next time. And we are so glad you joined us for this episode of Voices from the Valley. We've got all the links to the new News Lab report, along with links to our guests today on our website, cffoxvalley.org. Look for the podcast link on our homepage and look for today's episode titled Census, The Changing Face of the Fox Valley. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe to this podcast and get all of our episodes delivered to you on demand, sent to your computer or smart device. We'll see you next time on Voices from the Valley, a podcast of the Community Foundation for the Fox Valley Region.